Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope dares to surprise fans of tactical games, and particularly fans of its predecessor, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, by removing the grid and cursor so celebrated in the first game, and revamping its combat with the introduction of real-time movement. Heroes can now move freely around the battlefield. It's been real. There were a lot of ups and downs along the way, but in the end, it paid off giving players a truly different tactical experience and opening up new possibilities. This is the story of those ups and downs. This is the first episode of Ubisoft's Deep Dev. Considering that Kingdom Battle's gameplay was so well received, and how the grid is part of the DNA of tactical games, changing the gameplay posed a big risk for the development team led by Ubisoft Paris and Ubisoft Milan. It's in the DNA of the Mario Plus Rabbit series to be unexpected, to be surprising, fresh. We managed to break a lot of things, but in the end, it makes sense, it works, it's super funny. But it was quite a challenge and a bet, so the first part of production was a bit stressful on how many things we revamped and um, hopefully we're not breaking anything that people loved in the past. We knew that, okay, Sparks of Hope, it needs to be not just a simple sequel, it's, it needs to be a completely new experience. But of course, the core experience of the game is on the combat, and after a lot of iteration, uh, this is where the, the real-time control and getting rid of the grid and the cursor uh, came in. The team had already begun to think about removing the grid and the cursor during production of Kingdom Battle's DLC, Donkey Kong Adventure, where they saw how the action, such as Donkey Kong grabbing heroes, added a lot of minute-to-minute -minute twists and turns to the gameplay. And with the, the new game, we wanted to achieve even more. We wanted to give this feeling of action, freedom to the player. Players can react to enemy entering in your area of attack and the same the enemy can do if you are entering in their area and this is already breaking the walls of the classical turn-based game. In Mario plus Rabbit Kingdom Battle, you were controlling the cursor. You will need to anticipate that, okay, if I send my character there, I will be able to shoot at this enemy, etc. But it was really uh, asking the player to project themselves. Uh, here, thanks to the real time, if you want to know if you will be able to shoot an enemy if you go there, just go there. This gave the team the opportunity to play with more real time elements in Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope. For example, you can dash a bomb, it will trigger the explosion timer, so you have a short amount of time to pick up the bomb and throw it on another character before it explodes. All those real-time elements, they are incrementing the quickness and easiness of combat and the synergy between the heroes, because the player can do way more stuff within this new way of controlling the character than before. However, it turns out that the trickiest part of giving the player freedom of traversal and introducing real-time elements into a turn-based strategy game is, well, keeping it a turn-based strategy game. It's not easy because uh, if you do uh, actually exaggerate on the real-time element, elements, uh, it's not a turn-based anymore. We lost everything when it comes to tactics because you didn't have the same precision when you position your heroes. Then we had too much real-time action elements that were hampering the strategy of the players. So the team decided to pair the real-time elements back and hone in on the ones that worked best. When we started to remove a bit of those real-time actions, because we had tons of them at first, we started to grab uh, what is important, which is you need all the time to understand where you are, what you can do, what your actions could be, where the enemies are, and what the level design is proposing to you as well. A big issue still remained, however. Introducing this degree of freedom of movement for the player undermined a crucial pillar of the turn-based strategy game ethos that you must commit to an action, and once you have committed, that's what you're stuck with. Players were moving around, they were getting very close to the enemy, they will use their weapon, attack, and then they will run back and hide behind the cover. And basically there was no commitment at all. And once again, for a tactical game, commitment is like part of the pillar. A solve was eventually implemented. Once you've attacked, you're committed to the position you attacked in. You need to really think about where you are going to position yourself and when you know that you want to stay here, this is where you can do your attack. 
And I think that uh, this uh, discussion influenced also the way we wanted to treat the exploration phases. So today, the same freedom that you have in combat uh, and direct control over the heroes, you have it in, uh, in exploration. Revamping exploration in Sparks of Hope was just as important to the team as changing up the combat. The new game allows you to freely explore multiple planets, each with a unique atmosphere, setting, and characters. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Every planet has its own side quests, challenges, and secrets to discover. In Kingdom Battle, having Battlefield and Exploration on the same continuous track made for an immersive experience, but also created dependencies between the Exploration and Battlefield experiences, causing limitations for both. And really what it opened us to do is to really focus on each experience separately and ensure that we can build it the best as possible without having too many dependencies between the two. It also enables us to add much more epic and bigger battlefield because then we were not limited about what was going on and where it was taking place in the exploration. We also developed a specific technology for uh, Sparks of Hope that enables us to create variety in the battle's experience for the replayability. So the fact that now the battlefields are outside of the exploration area also enables us to, in some specific battle, every time you replay them, you will have a different experience a different battlefield, different enemies to face, etc. And of course, it would not have been possible if those battlefields were present and art locked in their exploration content. Separating the battles and exploration removed limitations and gave level designers an opportunity to be even more creative in a new galaxy. The team was happy with the results. Battles have become more surprising for players as you can't get a look at what to expect until you step onto the battlefield. So it was our desire from the beginning to venture in, in a new settings where we could really explore the planet. So today, you can go where you want, basically, almost where you want. Of course, there are some gates here and there for narrative reason or for a level of difficulty reason because you now have levels so you cannot go against too powerful enemies. Apart from that, you can do what you want. And the first time we were able to do that, that full walkthrough of the first planet with all the battles, the alternation between exploration, puzzles, combat, uh, this is really where everything clicked together and we had a great benchmark to then reproduce that and expand it even further in our latest planets. Sparks of Hope's development team set out to surprise fans by changing the Kingdom Battle gameplay formula they had already gotten high praise for, and revamping the combat by adding in real-time elements and opening up exploration proved to be a risk worth taking. Each of Sparks of Hope's five planets are filled with distinct story missions, side quests, and exciting battles that truly empower players to think differently about turn-based strategy. Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope is available now on Nintendo Switch. To learn more about the new game, visit news.ubisoft.com. Catch this!